Hey guys, it's Tana. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are part of the Pear Blossom Press uh, Power Pack Hop. Uh, we're going to use the Heffy Doodle Your Weird stamp set. As you can see, most of my images are already colored. I just wanted to color this little guy here in front of you. As you can see, I'm using short little strokes to kind of make them look furry. I did it with the darkest color first, which was R85. And then I used R83 and did the same thing. I went over it with the light and went back in with the dark one to reinforce those little brush strokes. Uh, I used a gel pen on all their eyes to make them shine. And then this little guy, all these little guys here, uh, like Corin, Corin recently did a card on her channel and she's right. They look like they're supposed to be made out of jelly. So I colored them ahead of time and covered them with glossy accents. <clears throat> Here I'm coloring the spaceship, just giving you a little preview of what that's going to look like. And I wanted to say, uh, make sure you follow along in the hop. Everything that you need to know will be in the description box below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of awesome cards to see. I just used C6, C4, and C2 for the spaceship. And now I'm going to, where the lights are supposed to go, I'm going to use my little pokey tool from Tonic and I'm going to poke a hole into each one. And then I kind of swirled it around to make them a little bit bigger, trying not to bend my cardstock too much. So now we're going to set that aside. And then you're not, I'm not going to show a whole lot of my uh, space background. It's like a galaxy background, uh, kind of like the one I did for the campfire card last week. Or the week before uh, but I'm using regular distress inks this time instead of oxides and after putting on a few circles of blueprint sketch I realized I didn't put the moon on I had originally printed out or stamped out a couple of them but you don't want to add too much at least where you're gonna have your push button and everything on a light up card too many layers so I decided to stamp that right onto the card and I'm also going to cut out a few circles out of masking tape um, to make some planets after we're done inking up our background. Also, I didn't want this card to be too crowded, so it is a 5x7 card. It's a bigger card. <clears throat> Here I'm just using some... I tried to use shaded lilac and it was too light, so we're going to go over that a little bit with some wilted violet. That planet, I wanted it to kind of look like Pluto. I put some squeeze lemonade around the edge of the moon. I masked that off as well. And I don't know why I put worn lipstick around that planet over there to the left because that ended up being Earth. And then that little yellow one there is supposed to be kind of like Saturn, Jupiter, something yellowish at least. So now we're all done. I started, you guys saw very quickly that I started to put some chip sapphire in. That's what I filled in all the white spaces with. And then I very lightly went over it with my black soot and a bigger makeup brush, or blending brush. Now I'm going to use some Distress Paint in Picket Fence by Tim Holtz. And my water brush to flick some spatters on there for stars until I like the way it looks. I probably did this three or four times. I don't show you all of it. And I also went in there with some more of that gold stuff I have in the bottle from Hero Arts from the previous kit. But you guys know what I'm talking about. The one with <clears throat> that I have to take out and tap on because the sprayer is broken. I think that sprayer broke like right after I got it in the kit. I don't even think it worked through all the cards I made. I made sure that was nice and dry. And now we're going to peel all our masks off. I just love revealing that white empty space. Doesn't that look cool? So here is the acetate I used. We're going to do one more spaceship top. This is what not to do. This was a regular piece of acetate. I don't know why I tried to heat emboss it. Uh, I'm using embossable window plastic. That's what it's called by Judy Kins. I actually won this as a prize from Mary Polanco on her channel. So I'm going to use my Versifying Clair Nocturne ink to stamp that twice after I use my powder bag very heavily. Uh, the embossing powder will stick to the acetate like static. you got to make sure you use a lot of the embossing bag. St 
stamp that twice, take it out, and I put some clear embossing powder on it and very carefully heat it up. Even with the embossable acetate, you still have to be very careful. So I, I got it nice and hot, and then I would hit the uh, stamped image, move it away. And just kept doing that over and over again. Sometimes I hit it from underneath, and I did that until it was fully melted. I just wiped it off with a damp cloth and make sure there was no more powder left on them and then I fussy cut each one of those out, all three of them. We only end up using two, but I did cut out all three. I like to have extra images to play with just in case. So there's the last one right there being cut out. Now I'm going to draw some kind of curved lines that meet on every other side on the Saturn circle, we'll call it. I don't draw anything on the little guy and then I drew hopefully what looks like continents on the planet Earth. The purple one we're just going to color in with some BV markers. I think I used BV01, BV02, and BV00. And I really did want it <coughs> excuse me, to look like Pluto so I just kind of did those in layers and then blended them in with the blender. I really do like the way all the planets turned out really starting to get into this card I just wanted to show you here that those little additions to the moon I did add some on my stamped image and to color it in I did use C8 a very little bit of C8 I'm not going to show you all the coloring here though then I went in with C6 and kind of expanded out from the darker outlines I used on the moon and then we're going to go in with C4 and expand out from those and then I go in with my BG10 and BG11 markers so I can kind of give that moon a glow now I do realize that I have a yellow glow and a gray moon but I just did not want to color my moon yellow and I really like the way the moon turned out I do have an extra one colored for the inside and here I am gluing the little furry guys into their spaceship uh, the long gangly armed ones are already glued into theirs I glued the top of the spaceship on just at the bottom where it meets the bottom part of the spaceship as you can see here I didn't want too much even though the Nouveau dries clear I didn't want too much of the glue showing so it's only glued right down at the bottom and at the very top once I put them onto the card base. I'm just going to trim off the excess that's sticking outside of the spaceship and then they're all contained. Now we're going to take a piece of black cardstock, powder that up really good and we're going to use the sentiment, I think it says you're weird, I love it. We'll find out in a second. And that's going to be on the front of our card. I heat emboss that with Ranger Silver Embossing Powder. Yeah, you're weird and I love it, I think it says. And then I trim that down. That is going to become a bigger flag. And you'll see that in a minute. I glue those little jelly guys onto the moon. I did play with the idea of putting them into a third spaceship, but it just would have been too much we would have had to move up another card size guys so they were a little bit harder to glue down because they had the glossy accents on them but I just put a couple acrylic blocks on them there's my flag all I did to make that was use the little flag stamp from the stamp set and kept stamping one over the other and wherever it overlapped but it didn't matter because I colored the flag pole in with black I left two of the flags and they both have two different sets of arrows pointing down and then the image or the sentiment at the very top. Now I'm deciding where I want the second spaceship so I can poke the holes into the card front itself because this is where our light is going to shine through. Now we get to the fun part guys. If you didn't think all that was fun, which it was, this part's even better. Watching this card come to life was so fun. Now those holes were a bit small, at least it seemed so to me. So I took my tweezers and made each all those little holes a little larger. I used my C4 
second moon image and lined it up with the one on the card front so I could trace it because this is where my battery pack with the push button is going to go. And then I also marked with a pencil all the little holes for the spaceship because our lights are going to go over there. So now I'm just tracing, very lightly tracing the battery pack so I can lift it up and put some glue on it. Uh, Amanda has a very excellent troubleshooting video. If you run into any problems, and I will link that below. Uh, I'm using liquid adhesive. I guess I didn't learn my lesson last time, but I'm using my Nouveau this time. And I'm not pushing down too hard. If you use too much wet glue, you could ruin the connection at some point between your copper tape, your lights, and your battery pack, and you don't want to do that. Now if you notice, my light on the left is pointed sideways. After I put on the other light, I realized they both had to be pointing down so I didn't have to do too many lines of copper tape to get to the positive and negative sides. So I just lifted that guy up with my tweezers and I placed him back down with his negative side pointing down. So now you see me, I'm very lightly touching only the end of the copper tape because the more the more your skin cells get on the tape, the more resistance you're going to have. Amanda explains it very well in the troubleshooting video. So anywhere I touched the tape, I made sure that was hanging off and not a part of the actual circuit. And I also used my little embossing tool for scoring card bases to use to fold it. Anybody that sews can tell these are kind of like mitered corners. So you fold it opposite of where you want the tape to go and then you fold it towards the direction you want it to go so that it covers up the sticky side of the tape. So I just run that up a little bit past my light and I'm going to trim that off. You could tear it but I was trying to keep my skin off of it so I used my scissors as much as I could and then I went straight across after folding it to cover the or get close to the positive side and then I had to run another one because that angle was just too funky to run over the positive side of the light. And you want to make sure you cover the little metal pad on the positive and negative side. And it's better if you go across it rather than coming down on top of it. I'm sorry if you can hear Jax in the background. He is supposed to be sleeping. Now we're going to do the negative side here. And he's been up there for two hours making noises, trying to get somebody to take him out of bed. And I'm going to go straight across so it meets both sides. This way I can hit the light on the right and also hit the right on the left off of the same line of copper tape. Kind of like a ladder. Your lights have to be connected as rungs and your main circuits are the ladder sides. Also a little something I picked up from Amanda's troubleshooting video. So I know I said it's better to go across the pads, but this was the easiest way to, for me to run it. So I was just very careful not to touch it with my fingertips. And now I've turned the card so I can run it up to the other light. Now you won't, will notice, now that I'm all done, I don't use a bone folder or anything, but I just use my finger to run across all the tape. I push the button and the light on the right didn't work. So I burnished all the tape down again with my fingertip and I did notice there was a little rip above the battery pack in the copper tape. So I recovered that like a band-aid with a piece of tape that was long enough to go past the rip on both sides. And I just made sure that was going to stay down and I went over that my tape on the top and now both lights work. So the resistance from that tear in the copper tape was keeping my light on the right from working. So now I have my top of my card over the card front to see how well you can see the lights through it. And because of the position of my spaceship on the right hand side, I thought that the right hand side needed another light. So we are adding a third light to our circuit. I'm just running another piece of tape up and I stuck my light straight on top of the copper tape these the, cap, the lights can be connected either from laying on top of the copper tape or having the copper tape lay over them because they are also conductive 
adhesive on the lights themselves. Now I have all three lights working. Wasn't that simple? And I'm going to put my, uh, what's, what's that called, guys? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I draw one, at least one blank per video foam tape, and I doubled it up. The instructions say to have double up foam tape for your card. And I put it everywhere there wasn't copper tape, everywhere I could to make sure that my card was pretty stable. And then I also uh, put another piece of copper tape over my light because it was giving me issues. And once I put that piece of copper tape there, my light was working just fine again. And there you go. All three lights are working. And then, oh, and I put that second light back on. I forgot I took it off to put more tape on. And then I just had to rerun the negative side. I forgot I did this, you guys. I noticed it was giving me issues again after I took put the foam tape on, so I just reran that particular circuit to that light again. And then it worked just fine. There you go. All, all, all lights are firing. I noticed when I picked it up in my hand, if I wasn't pushing the button just right, it wasn't working, but laying down flat, it was working fine. So we're going to go ahead and put this together. My card base is going to go right on top there. I decided that flipping that face forward and putting this on backwards was the easier way to do it. So I just pop that on there and hold it down for a second. And our card front is complete except for adding the spaceships. So here I am gluing the spaceship on and that's going to glue straight to the card front because we're going to cover up those holes where the lights are going to shine through so I didn't want too much space between the light itself and the holes because I would, the, the more light that's shown through the better. Now we're going to use Studio Katia iridescent bubbles on the right spaceship and then clear Studio Katia droplets on the left hand um, spaceship and this is where I thought I made a cru crucial mistake I really did think I was gonna have to do a whole new card for you guys I pushed the button and panicked because with all that glue on there you could not see the light you could see the light better through the card underneath the spaceships than you could through the holes that I had made so I was like you know what let's just wait till the glue dries and see so I put the little monster guy in there and the little half half of a moon and I stamped thank you for believing in me on the inside of the card and then I turned off all my lights and I went to sleep and prayed that in the morning it would work I forgot that didn't stamp all the way so I fixed it with my little multi-liner and we're gonna glue this um, with some Nuvo adhesive that I have in my syringe courtesy of Corn Whiskman and I always use glue on these light up cards well that's the only second one I've ever made but so far I've only ever used glue because I want them to stay together so I'm gonna push down on that and then I let it dry overnight let me tell you I let it dry upside down to make sure glue didn't seep into the light and there you go it worked you guys you'll be able to see it better in a second because I turn off the lights but there's the lights and now we're going to add some I think these are honeybee kaha I think it was k-a-j-a -A, gems and they kind of looked like meteors to me like asteroids so we're going to use these as little asteroids flying through space and I kind of put them in a design from the top right aiming down towards the moon and then we're just going to glue them on with my Lawn Fawn glue tube and then I'm going to show you guys by turning the lights off how well this card actually works I was so excited you guys when I woke up today and found out I didn't have to remake this card I was so happy you know, not that it wasn't fun, but as a card maker, you like to do different things, not remake the same things, you know. So I think there's two more we're going to put on here that I didn't cut out of the video. And then we're going to turn off some lights and see how we work. So there it is, guys. 
Doesn't that look cool? Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow the next person in the hop. I'm pretty sure there's some prizes being given away. So make sure you comment. And if you like what you saw and you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you can be aware of all our giveaways. There's at least one every month. Bye-bye for now, guys.